So the Dallas Cowboys are struggling right now on both the offensive and defensive side of the football. And today we're going to talk about exactly what it is that's happening with the Cowboys. We're going to talk about why the Dallas Cowboys have been very, very inconsistent this year. You know, one of the things that I'm noticing while watching tape is the Dallas Cowboys offensive scheme is not working this year. The offensive play concepts, the shot plays that they're ultimately designing, they're not working. And to me, I see the same exact things happening on the defensive side of the football, and that tells me there's an issue with coaching. And we're going to start with this first play right here because this play right here is one of those plays where it's currently third and five. The score is seven to three. You know, you're trying to take the lead potentially, if not at least kick the field goal to make it six to seven. And the Cowboys are going to run this corner route with CD Lamb. They're going to essentially run this China concept on the offensive side of the football. And you're going to see the pass is actually going to end up getting intercepted here by Brian Branch. Now, you guys might say Brian Branch has made a really, really good play on the football, but I would disagree with it. I think the Mike McCarthy scheme has kind of been figured out. I think the Cowboys have run certain concepts too many times and teams have seen it on tape. I think the Dallas Cowboys are struggling a lot this season and it's just inconsistent football because of the mind and, and, and approach they're kind of taking. All right, so you guys see this interception. You guys see the China route that the, that the Dallas Cowboys designed. It ultimately ends up not working. You're going to see the same exact concept get, get thrown here. Same exact situation. Once again, it's intercepted. This play was obviously a lot later on in that Detroit Lions Cowboys game. The formation is not exactly the same, right? You got a running back out here on this one, but it's similar. You still got three guys here. You're still going to have a wide receiver since you run a corner and the quarterback's going to essentially throw this pass once again. And once again, it's going to get intercepted. To me, the Dallas Cowboys on the offensive side of the football is broken. And this is a great example of that because this concept here is only going to work so many times. You know, there's like a 10% chance that if it's a third down play, the Dallas Cowboys are going to try to run this China concept. All right, there's a legit 10% chance. And to me, that's way too predictable. If the Cowboys had never run that concept before, it makes sense, but they've run it multiple times before. And you see it on tape if you guys watch tape. Although it's run out of different formations, it's run out of different looks. We've seen it multiple times now on third down. The Dallas Cowboys are going to try to run this, this corner concept. All right, they're going to try to get the football into this guy. And again, it's worked sometimes, right? We saw against the Cleveland Browns, ended up being a 21-yard touchdown for Brandon Cooks. But you'll also see that teams are recognizing it. Teams are making adjustments to it. Although it's not 100% the same thing across the board, we're seeing the Dallas Cowboys being a little predictable on the offensive side with the route design, the concepts, essentially what they're trying to do in certain situations. But more than that, I feel like another thing that's an issue with the Dallas Cowboys is they just don't have the playmakers right now that can ultimately get them over the top. And I think they're way too reliant on guys that just aren't able to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I want to talk a little bit about that. So the Dallas Cowboys have this approach on the offense side of the football. That is, we want to get our best playmakers the football in space, and we want them to make plays. So they throw CeeDee Lamb four or five-yard passes, and then he takes them 27, 45, 60 yards, and he takes them to the house sometimes. And that's great when you get CeeDee Lamb the football in space. That concept makes sense. You want to get your best player the football in space, that too, Lamb's probably the best wide receiver with the ball in his hands. But the thing is, is that same concept doesn't work with every single player that the Dallas Cowboys have. The Dallas Cowboys can't throw screen plays, for example, to their running backs and expect their running backs to take it the distance. Because the running backs that the Cowboys have aren't very good football players. The Dallas Cowboys can't really rely on their tight ends to separate. Although this one here counts as a hold, the Dallas Cowboys don't have the playmakers that they have with CD Lamb across the board. So the philosophy that we're going to get our playmakers to football doesn't always work, right? You can't continue to throw up 50-50 passes. And this is one of the things that I see with the Dallas Cowboys a ton. They're throwing up 50-50 passes to their wide receivers minus CD Lamb. And the thing is, is they're throwing up 50-50 passes right now to guys that aren't able to make those plays. You're going to get a slip play here by Ferguson. You're going to throw up a 50-50 pass. It's going to be an incomplete pass. To me, the Dallas Cowboys have to design plays where they're guy, getting guys actually open. Uh, you see so many plays like this where it just doesn't look good. Uh, the spacing's off as well, right? Like, you have a guy wide open on this one, but again, the spacing's off, right? The, the concept is not designed properly. So although you have a wide receiver wide open, what's going to end up happening is because you have a chip here to help the left tackle, this guy's going to release a little late. And essentially, the guy that's covering this tight end is going to get right into the passing lane here of the wide receiver. All right, so the spacing's off here. You got to think this play through a little bit. 
if you're Mike McCarthy, you got to design this a little bit differently, right? This is probably an interception. Uh, had the guy obviously caught the football, but again, it's giving opportunities to guys that are not able to create separation. It's guys that are not able to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know, Turpin's a good playmaker, but he's not a great route runner, right? I think we can all agree to that, that he's a great playmaker. He's great with the ball in his hands. But to expect Turpin to run a whip in route and to him to separate against a, a guy who's a first-round pick is not a good matchup to ultimately take, right? To take Turpin to run this whip in, it just doesn't make sense, right? So to me, that's on Mike McCarthy to design a better play. It's on Mike McCarthy to understand who's running which route. It just doesn't make sense to me in certain situations. This was a fourth and two. So this one right here ends up being a turnover on downs. And of course, there's a lot of plays like this where guys just aren't separating. You know, it's not just Turpin. It's guys across the board. They're just not creating separation right now. And I think for the Dallas Cowboys, it's one of the issues they have. They got to add talent. They got to add weapons. They got to get better on the offensive side of the football. You got to add a running back. You got to add another wide receiver. You got to add a true number two wide receiver to CeeDee Lamb. You got to add a running back that's an actual difference maker, right? I think that alone would make the Dallas Cowboys a much, much better football team because right now it just doesn't look all that good. Also, another thing I think the Dallas Cowboys have to figure out is they got to figure out the offensive line. You know, they have a lot of money invested right now on this offensive line. Terrence Steele, Zach Martin are pretty highly paid. And then Tyler Smith is going to end up being one of the highest paid guards in the NFL. And then you also have two rookies who down the line will also have to end up getting paid. You're going to have to make some tough cuts, right? You're going to have to make some tough decisions on who you're keeping and who you're not ultimately going to end up keeping, all right? But you got to add playmakers. You got to add weapons. I think that's easy. The biggest issue with the Cowboys right now. And the coaching on the offense side of the football has to be a lot better. Now, switching and talking a little bit about the defense side of the football, they got to just be a little bit more consistent on defense. Now, before we go forward, I want to just take a second to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this channel because this content would not be possible without Underdog. If you guys have never utilized Underdog before, trust me, man, you guys are missing out. Uh, I don't do traditional fantasy sports that often. Uh, I did do one league this year, but generally speaking, I'm not really doing it anymore. And that's mostly because of Underdog. Underdog has this game that I really, really enjoy. It's called Pick'em. Essentially, you're going to go out there and just make picks that you think are going to be right. They'll have pretty much every pick you can think of for every player. And they have multiple categories as well. So uh, an example would be, you know, I think Aiden O'Connell is going to throw for 125 yards. And you're essentially just going to pick higher on that, right? I think he'll have more than 125 yards. You might say, hey, Dak Prescott's going to have at least two touchdowns. Pick higher on that. You might say Caleb Williams is going to have a rushing touchdown. And some of those, those uh, stats also give you multipliers, right? So uh, usually for quarterbacks rushing it in, right? That's something most quarterbacks aren't doing every single week. Uh, you'll get like a 4x multiplier on that. Uh, so depending on the multiplier, depending on how many picks, you know, you can turn $5 into $400, thousand dollars right whatever it ends up being uh obviously it depends on the multiplier but you know underdog to me is one of those places that i pretty much do every single week at this point very fun it makes like watching the jets and the dolphins without tua makes them interesting right so uh, check out underdog if you guys have never used them before it is the best place trust me when i say that um go to underdogfantasy.com use my promo code that you guys see on the screen or use the app i recommend the app so let's get right back into the content now, switching and talking a little bit about the defense side of the football, they got to just be a little bit more consistent on defense. You know, you can't give up 30 points by the time the, the first half ends because the game's over at that point. No offense is going to be able to consistently put up those type of points. Now, I think one of the big struggles that the Cowboys have had this year on the defense side of the football is they've been in one-on-one -on -one situations and guys just aren't making plays. Regardless of who it is out there, they're just struggling. You know, and I shouldn't say regardless of who it is, right? Because obviously some guys are having more success than others. But we're still seeing a lot of situations where it's one-on-one. -on -one, the best man wins. And right now the Dallas Cowboys don't have that best man. The guy's essentially into, you know, getting beat. The guy's not being able to stay within what they're ultimately being taught. And they're giving up big plays. Another part of them giving up big plays is the fact that they're not able to tackle at the moment. Missed tackles has been a huge part of the Dallas Cowboys struggling. You know, you can tackle a, a player and maybe give up 10 yards, or you can miss a tackle and give up 20 or 25 yards. And we're seeing that right now with the Dallas Cowboys on the defense side of the football. They're missing tackles at a rate that I have never seen by the Dallas Cowboys under Dan Quinn at any point. 
Now, I'm not sure if that's a scheme thing or if there's some sort of lack of talent on the Cowboys' defense side of the football where they're missing tackles, but these missed tackles are leading to big plays. Now, we'll also say this. There is also a scheme issue that kind of happened that I think both Clint Kubiak and Ben Johnson took advantage of. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. Uh, to me, one of the things that a coach has to do is he has to be able to scheme things up properly. So Mike McCarthy might be a little bit too predictable, but I think there's a chance that on the defensive side of the football, Mike Zimmer is a little bit too predictable, specifically with certain coverages, certain zone coverages. Here's a great example of one of the things that I'm noticing with the Dallas Cowboys on the defense side of the football. It almost seems like guys are either confused or they're not 100% sure if they're in some sort of zone match coverage, which means that if a guy's going to end up running a post, the corner is going to actually end up running with them in man-to-man -man coverage. And if another guy runs essentially a deep cross, even though a guy here is in cover three, he actually ends up running with that as well. It's almost like these guys are a little confused because they're not sure what they should be doing. And I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples of, of exactly what I mean. So this one here is going to be a cover three. And notice how Chris Olave, as he runs his deep cross, the corner is going to end up chasing this. But at the same time, the cornerback here is going to end up running with the wide receiver running the post. In a cover three, sometimes you'll get this guy to drop off and allow this wide receiver to run that post. Uh, he'll drop off a little bit. He'll keep an eye for any potential crossers. But in this one here, that's not what's going to end up happening. So what that tells me is Mike Zimmer is actually teaching these guys these certain sets of rules. If a guy's running a deep post and you're the cover three corner, you're running with that. You're not going to drop off of it. If your guy runs a deep cross, you're going to run with that cross even though you're a cover three corner. And again, there's different rules. So if a guy runs a short route, it's a different set of rules. So I think guys are almost second thinking themselves. They're almost second guessing themselves. They're not 100% sure exactly what they should do. They're not really trusting the guy next to them. Is this guy going to take the cross or do I need to take this cross? And this same issue has happened multiple times on tape. You're going to see the wide receiver is going to end up going into motion across the middle of the uh, formation. The ball is going to get snapped and he's going to actually come around in an orbit motion back towards that same side. And essentially it's going to be a flea flicker with the tight end slipping and you're going to end up scoring a 52-yard touchdown on this play. So there's a couple of issues that happen within this play that I want to talk about. So first and foremost, the defense is in a cover three. So what's going to end up happening is as soon as the wide receiver goes in motion, notice how the defense is all going to essentially bump out one gap. But then notice how when 14 here comes back in this orbit motion, the cornerback here almost looks to follow that. You see the cornerback's going to run. He's almost going to follow that. And now he's going to get out of his own coverage. He's going to get out of his own drop. And then you're going to get a tight end to slip right there. So to me, I'm not sure if these guys are confused or, or kind of what's happening. Because it seems like offensive coaches are recognizing when these guys are in cover three. They're attacking certain spots of, of, of the field. They're attacking certain types of looks. Uh, they almost expect these corners to do certain things. And I'm going to show you guys one more play just to really get, get the, the point across. This play here looks like cover three to me, but it's kind of interesting because the receiver here is going to go into motion and you have a cornerback that's going to follow. So that shows it should be some sort of cover one man-to-man -man defense. But at the same time, based off of how the, the guys up front kind of process this, it to me feels like cover three, but because of what ends up happening, you're going to pick up 25 yards on this by the Detroit line. So I want to talk about this play a little bit. So you're going to get a guy to go into motion here. As this wide receiver goes into motion, you're also going to end up having the wide receiver here running a short cross. And Trayvon Diggs almost considers to run with that. But instead of running with that, he's going to actually end up getting off of that. And he's going to end up staying over here into his third of the field. And he's going to end up picking up the wide receiver coming across the middle of the field. But at the same time, you're going to see number 27, the other third corner, follow the crossing wide receiver. So I'm not sure what's happening there, right? Because if it's a cover three, you would expect that cornerback to stay on the one third of the field over here. You would expect Diggs to stay over here. And of course, you get the, the, the post safety there. But it almost seems like some of the rules that they have is if you have a deep cross or a deep post, that as a cornerback, you follow that essentially. But what's happening is now teams might recognize that. And they might put a guy on a short cross, understanding the cornerback's not going to run with the short cross. But if you pair that up with a deep route, well, that means you might end up getting a linebacker here on your, your wide receiver, right? So these are rules that Mike Zimmer is essentially putting in. And I feel like teams are kind of figuring these rules out. They're starting to figure out that, hey, we can take advantage of this defense because they have certain concepts and certain rules within their cover three, right? And every, every team has their own variation of cover three, right? Every team will handle 
the post routes. Every team will handle corners. Every team will handle short routes differently. But I almost feel like what's happening with Mike Zimmer's defense right now is that the smart coaches, the Ben Johnsons, the Clint Kubiaks, they've kind of figured out what the Dallas Cowboys are trying to do in certain situations. And they're almost being taken advantage of. Now, generally speaking, obviously, I think from a scheme issue, the Cowboys could be a little bit better with the rules that they're putting into some of these defensive backs. I also think the linebackers have to do a better job in their drop, right? The depth that they're getting, they need to really turn their heads. They need to find guys behind them because it's another issue that's happening right now. We're seeing wide receivers slipping right behind these, these linebackers. And this is definitely one of the weaknesses is of the cover three defense. But as a linebacker, you still got to make it difficult, right? You can't let these guys get wide open. You got to try to make it harder on these, these guys that are ultimately slipping right behind the cover three linebackers. You got to try to not let these guys slip behind you, right? Uh, so that's another thing that's kind of happening with the Cowboys. Overall, things just don't look good with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, there's issues on the offensive line. There's issues with the pass rush. Guys aren't 100% understanding the scheme and kind of what the Cowboys are trying to do. There's a lot of turnover in terms of the, the players that they've kind of brought in. You know, there's new, you know, there's rookie starting. There's guys that weren't here last year. There's guys that didn't play last year playing a lot more this year. And there's also a lot of missed tackles right now with the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm sure they can clean it up. Now, can the Dallas Cowboys actually clean it up? I think they can. Right? I think it's definitely possible that they bounce back and, and continue to have success. But it's going to really come down to the coaching. They got to get it fixed. You know, you're not going to just trade for five new players. It's not going to happen. So guys also have to tackle. All right, guys also got to be able to make the play that they're tasked with doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this clarified anything you guys might have had questions with. I'm sure I missed a couple of things that you guys are probably going to say. This is what you think is the biggest factor to the Cowboys being inconsistent. Drop a comment down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.